Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about the Visor Warm Mattes Palette. I have just introduced myself to Visor eyeshadows, I don't know why I've taken so long, I'm so bummed out now, they are by far my favourite matte formula, um, so that's why I thought I'd do a quick demo and swatches and talk to you about the warm mattes. Um, my first purchase was actually the Grande Pro, which I will be doing a video on. It's just that one's going to take me a lot longer to film because there's so many more eyeshadows in it. I also bought neutral mattes, which I'll do a video on, and obviously this video, warm mattes. Um, let's compare warm mattes and neutral mattes side by side. So this is the palette we're going to talk, be talking about today. And this is neutral mattes and this is them compared to one another. Um, what I loved most about the palettes, about the eyeshadow formula, is that it just blends so well. A lot of people have been throwing this claim out a lot lately, saying that it's like a soft focus effect. I don't say that about much because it's a really big claim to say that like there's a filter through makeup that's a strong claim but for me I truly am gonna throw that out there and apply that to these eyeshadows they honestly look like how your makeup looks through a camera lens it's so soft and beautiful and buildable they're pigmented but buildable it's so strange like if you just follow the successions of colors through here which is pretty much what I did today you will end up with the most beautiful matte look ever and since I've bought these eyeshadows I've only been wearing matte eyeshadow looks and I am loving it um, so I'll do swatches next but we'll go through a few of the things that are important like the pricing the pricing jumps around a lot and if you were to convert the Australia the price that it's in US to Australian I think you find there wouldn't be that much of a difference um, the price also jumps around a lot from where you're getting it from so we'll do a quick calculation here because I've done some on my screen but I haven't compared the US and Australian rates so USD to AUD in Australia it is $133 from Sephora which is the most expensive um, you will get free shipping on that and if you're Rouge or VIB um, obviously there'll be sale times where you could pick it up it's $115.96 from Beautylish but that is not inclusive of tax, so that would probably bring you up to a very similar price as from Sephora Australia. The place where I get it from and the place that I found it to be the cheapest is from Beauty Bay at $97. So she is a pricey palette, but worth every penny. Um, you can also get it on sale. Like at the time I'm, I'm filming this video, it is on sale for $77.60. I have seen it on sale for as low as $67. So if you ever see that, like jump on it. I think I might jump on um, Neutral Mats 2, the milieu. Uh, I bet you they'll probably have a pretty big Boxing Day sale. In the US, it's $80 from Muse Beauty and Sephora. So the price doesn't jump around there. But if you convert the US to... Oz dollar that is a direct $115 which is what it's being sold for on Beauty Lish. so it's a direct uh, I find the Sephora Australia prices fluctuate so if you were to do the conversion I find the Sephora prices fluctuate um, Mecca's not held at buys up but Mecca's pretty good for having the conversion rate pretty close so price per gram is four dollars and four cents in Oz dollars and three dollars thirty three in US dollars. I'll put this on the screen because or else it's just me mumbo jumbling numbers, isn't it? And then part price per pan, so per eyeshadow, is eight dollars and eight cents in Australia and six dollars sixty seven in US dollars. And let me tell you, that is a bargain for what this is. That is less expensive than Mac shadows and fairly close to Makeup Geek shadows. And let me say, Makeup Geek and Mac have nothing on this quality. It is amazing. My plan is actually to get a separate empty palette and like combine the two. I think that would be my dream palette, these two combined. The packaging is fairly standard of pro products. It's just a hard plastic and you can actually pop the singles out relatively easily. There's got little divots here for you to pop them out and put them into a separate palette as these are a pro product and they are marketed as a pro 
brand altogether, which I love. Now, the thing that was other than I fell in love with the eyeshadows completely once I used them, but I did a lot of research on the ingredients and they honestly have used um, really nice ingredients. Obviously, the two main ingredients are talc and mica, which as we all know, there's a little bit of uh, about the farming of talc and mica. Is it farmed ethically? We don't really know. Um, because these are made in Italy, I'm gonna go ahead and say that you probably have more trust in this brand than any others to farm to get their ingredients from an ethically traded location. Uh, all the other ingredients are all, there's a lot of them that are plant derived, which I really love. I'm actually gonna put the ingredients up on the screen and I will put the information down below as well because I find the ingredients so interesting. So it's talc, mica, zinc, citrate, something I can pronounce, something I can't pronounce, something I can't pronounce, and something I can't pronounce, but the, there are three, four ingredients that say plant derived and then one ingredient saying vegetable derived. Like I said, I will have all the ingredient information that I researched down below, along with the pricing stuff. I've been through packaging, so now I guess it's time to move on to swatches and the demo. I'll do the swatches first and then the demo will roll on from after that. Also, the demo will be of the makeup I have on right now, if that wasn't already implied. I hope it was. Anyway, swatches. I'll do this on a bare arm, like I always do. Um, I'll probably maybe start to go red, but that's just my skin, not the eyeshadows and skews that pile. I keep the unicorns for things for a while while I'm researching the ingredients, and because I don't always say on the actual unit where it's made, and then I have to get on the internet when I could just pull out the unicorns. So that's why I keep the unicorns. Another little pop-in message in case you were curious, which I'm sure you weren't. So we're going to go this way to this way. So shade number one is obviously the lightest transition area shade. I only set my transition area, I don't actually set my lid, and that's the colour that I used it for today. Uh, second shade, beautiful transition shade again. Not sure if it's going to show up on camera. Let's see if I can get any closer if it will. Third, sh third shade top row. And fourth shade top row. Oof, that yellow is pigmented. I haven't actually used that yellow on my eye yet. To be honest, I am actually moving away from like warm shadows all the time. Let's go over with a second swipe so that you can really see the color. So that is the first row with about two swipes on each. Now we'll do the second row, first shade. We'll do a second swipe on that so you can see. Second shade, second row. Possibly my favorite shade. I love these like cream sickle shades. Third shade, second row. And last shade, second row. So I'm just gonna wait for my finger to dry off a little bit. See if I can get you closer. Oh god, dipped my finger into the wrong shade. So that is the first two rows. Now we will do the last row. Last row, first shade from the left. One swipe, and now this will be the second swipe. Second shade, third row from the left. Third shade, last row from the left. And last shade, third slash last row. Kind of going over a weird section of my arm there. But hopefully you can see them in all their glory. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That is all the swatches of the Bizart Warm Mats. Can you see me shaking? I'm literally shaking trying to hold my arm out. That is so depressing. 
but that is the swatches nonetheless. Now we will get on to the demo, which is my favorite bit because I've done soft glam today. It's my favorite look so far and this, these eyeshadow palettes are the best to achieve a soft glam. So if you wanna see how I got, just keep watching. Okay, so tutorial time. I'm going in with the P. Louise eyeshadow base in 0.5 Rumor and buffing this out with a beauty blender. It's my favorite eyeshadow base for anything. I've tried the Natasha Denona one, it's good, it's all good, but honestly, you just need this one and move on with your life. Now I'm taking the lightest shade in the palette and applying that with a Morphe R40 to the transition area. I only set my transition area, I don't really feel the need to set my lid, I also set the outer V. Now I'm grabbing my Morphe Cut Sponge and I merely just use this more as a guide but it does help the eyeshadow having a messy application. Same with the Morphe R40 again in shade number 3, buffing that into the transition area as well. I soon swapped to a Morphe R37 as the 40 was just too big. I will be applying this into the transition but I'm also, as you can see, starting to build the overall shape. I'll start to go into that out of V as well at the same time as doing the transition to really create that nice elongated blown out eye. I think with soft glam your technique really does have to be there. It's actually pretty hard to achieve. Now I'm taking shade number 7 in a Morphe R39 and I'm starting to really work on deepening the areas that you want more defined, the outer V, the inner socket. Now I'm grabbing shade number 10 and further doing that. Building up colours slowly works for me. However, if you want to go straight in with the darker shades, you could. I just find an easier blending process if you do it this way. Now I'm taking the Morphe M506 and shade number 10 and I'm just starting to really make that wing. Soft glam to me is creating a really glamorous look without any harsh things such as black eyeliner or just any eyeliner really in general. So you try and make all the effects of that except with shadow. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm making that kind of cat eye and really detailing it with a small brush. Going over it with the R39 just to make sure it's all nice and blended out. We don't want any harsh lines and just the, the seams are beautiful. Now I'm mixing shade one and two together and applying that to the lid. This is like the most satisfying bit for me to watch. I just think this really completes the look, really cleans it up, creates the nice definition between what is the lid and what is your socket. These shades are so pigmented, they are absolutely perfect for this. I forgot to mention in the actual video that these shadows are made to mix. They mix together really well. It's almost like paint. You can mix together whatever shades you wish to make them more stronger. Now I'm tight lining, tight lining with shade number 10. I always tug on my eye. I don't actually recommend you do this, but I kind of have to. I have kind of wrinkly lids. <laughs> so again, just creating a wing without using any eyeliner. Lower lash. Now starting with a Morphe R39 in shade number 3 and just working on the lower lash, starting to blow it out. You'll notice every lower lash colour I put on, I blend into the upper and we're also just following that shape really nicely. One of the dead giveaways with Soft Glam is too much on the lower lash line, so just be light-handed. This is shade number 6 deepening it now. Pretty much just follow what you did on top. And now a JH40, that same detail brush we went in with before and shade number 10 and just really defining pretty much as close to your lid uh, ball really. Now this is L'Oreal Telescopic on the lower lash. Like you can see, you can see how soft that lower lash line is so that you don't mess up the shape of the overall look. And I always leave this bit in me dusting off the powder because it's so satisfying to watch. 
something I feel is reflecting in my foundation today or I put on a shade that's just too light. Do you agree? Something looks like it's got some flash back there. I will find out what it is or if it's just too light a foundation. Not sure. Okay, that's it from me today, guys. I hope you got a good indication of what this palette is like. You got the pricing, you got the packaging, you got the ingredients, you got a demo and you got swatches. So hopefully it's a pretty all-inclusive video. If I have left anything out, please comment down below because I want my reviews. I don't really want to call this a review because I already love the product. I want it to be like product focus or something like that. Something that I use every part of, I'm only really gonna talk about the things that are 100% part of my routine. Um, and this is 110% never leaving my routine unless Pfizer or another another eyeshadow palette come out that I like more which I just don't see that happening but anyway um, I hope you enjoyed thumbs up if you liked it subscribe comment down below and I'll see you on my next one bye guys